Hi there, I'm Matt with State of Flex here to talk to you about Nausicaa, the Valley of the Wind. Um, this is an interesting film uh, because I have kind of a weird relationship with it. This was one of the very first Miyazaki movies I'd ever seen before I even knew who Miyazaki was. Uh, when I first started getting into anime, um, I uh, was in uh, early high school. And I used to go to the video store and rent uh, things where I got introduced to like Vampire Hunter D, Ghost in the Shell, uh, various works like that. And uh, they had a very small library of, of uh, anime films. And this was one of them, however it was under a different title, it was called uh, Warriors of the Wind. And I saw it, it had this kind of neat cover of like uh, a bunch of warriors standing behind like the demon creature thing that you see here, the, the bug alien guy, uh, or at least that's how I kind of read the movie cover as. Um, so I was like, oh cool, it's going to be like aliens or, or starship troopers, just a, an anime form. And so I went home and I watched it and I was thoroughly unimpressed. Like there was nothing about the movie that the, the poster or the, the cover art of that VHS does not sort of show you what that movie is going to be. Uh, like in any way. Um, also the color on it was really washed out, the, the voice work seemed very TV quality, it didn't have uh, the, the more recent release, and I'll touch on this in a minute, has a much better uh, English dubbing uh, if that's the option you so choose. Um, but yeah, Warriors of the Wind never really uh, did much for me and when I discovered Miyazaki and his works I um, uh, never really had interest in revisiting it because I was like, oh, he did that one? That's not very good. And then I uh, just kind of ignored it and let it not happen. Uh, and, and I let uh, what will be his next movie be my like true introduction to the world of Miyazaki. Um, so uh, it took me a long time before I revisited it. And uh, last year I actually got a chance to do so. And I watched uh, the official title, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, um, and uh, I was completely, completely blown away with how good it is, and how this is like the genuine first introduction to Miyazaki's work. This movie is sort of, uh, it's not a Studio Ghibli film, however, it has sort of been retconned into the library. This was still pre-Ghibli in 1984, if memory serves. Um, and uh, has some, uh, like, just stunning animation. It's not necessarily quite as polished as uh, his later films will, will look. There's uh, not a whole lot of texture on particularly, like, her plane or uh, her flying apparatus. Um, and, like, the, when you get into the, the uh, jungle, uh, the, the overgrown jungle, um, it doesn't necessarily look uh, as polished as some of his, his later works will be. Um, but other than that, the animation is really just eye-catching, and the, the tone of this film, the score, everything about it, it just sort of screams Miyazaki. This is like the first genuine true uh, flavor of Miyazaki. You got little hints of it with uh, the previous two films that I uh, talked about uh, Panda Go Panda and uh, Lupin the Third, his his involvement with that uh, that film, um, but this feels genuinely uh, genuinely Ghibli. Uh, the score, as I said, is just uh, a thing of beauty. It has strong action uh, elements, but it has like a sense of wonder and whimsy, um, and uh, I appreciated that. Uh, it has a lot of interesting things to say thematically um, about environmentalism, uh, about war, um, and uh, it has a strong feministic stance, uh, which uh, is uh, quite appealing to me. I really uh, love the character of Nausicaa. So uh, what is this film about? Uh, this film uh, takes place after like a post-apocalypse. Um, you're, you're seeing civilization after the fall, but you're seeing elements of the civilization that was once before sprinkled throughout the animation in the film. They never really dive deep into it, but it's there if you're looking for it, and it, it makes it really kind of compelling, especially for uh, repeat viewings. Um, and uh, the world is left desolate. There's last 
uh, little vestiges of human life here and there, Nausicaa is a princess amongst one of these last little places. But she's an adventurous princess, one that goes out and seeks... Uh, her agency is never once in question. She is, she is her own character, uh, commanding, yet vulnerable, and, um, like, the, the English dubbing on it, uh, I really appreciate what uh, Alison Lohman did uh, to, to bring her character to life. Um, she has a softness to her voice, but her authority and her um, place in the society is never in question. She is just uh, firmly uh, commanding when she needs to be, while also being soft-spoken. Um, and like a hardcore pacifist as a character, uh, yet is willing to rise to battle if need be. Um, there's some excellent action uh, in the film throughout. The, the closing like half hour of this film is uh, breathtaking. The, the action is just incredibly uh, well, um, well illustrated and, uh, and whatnot. Um, I also appreciate the uh, the voice work of uh, Patrick Stewart and Mark Hamill and uh, the various others. The 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 subtitled version uh, has a better flavor for the thematic elements that kind of got lost in translation with the English dubbing. Uh, so I do encourage watching that. Uh, I guess this is a good time to get into how I watch uh, anime in general. Uh, first viewing. I always do the dubbed version because film is a visual medium. So you're meant to be seeing what's happening on screen. And uh, so I, I listen to the dubbing because it's the, the language I'm most familiar with. This is how I uh, tackle any foreign film, actually. Uh, and then I watch the film unfold. I try to uh, pick apart the film, visually see everything that I can, and then I usually watch it a second time in the subtitled option. Uh, that way I can... Uh, pick up a more concrete um, translation of what is being said, because oftentimes you do lose things in, in the translation during the dub because they're fo uh, focused for whatever reason on getting the mouths to match. Mouth matching has never bothered me. I grew up watching Godzilla. I didn't care that they'd never match the lips ever. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, I usually watch these films uh, dubbed first, subtitled second, and um, uh, I, I thought the dub work on this version of it that I uh, watched rather than Warriors of the Wind years ago was just gorgeous. Uh, the characters matched um, and uh, you really grow to appreciate them. Uh, and um, I also really, uh, moving back into like the, the minutiae of the film, uh, I like the interplay between the characters, particularly Nausicaa and the uh, sort of sage old man with the, the big bushy beard, uh, not beard, big bushy mustache. He, uh, they have like a, quite a lovely relationship. He seems to know about the world that came before. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not he truly lived there or if he's just knowledgeable of it, um, but he's sort of her center uh, for guidance and they have a kind of neat relationship and he... Uh, he is kind of a gifted warrior, but also playing the Obi-Wan type of let's, trying to maintain her uh, passivity um, early on in the film until she uh, she rises. So there's these uh, big um, kind of bug monsters that have now inherited the Earth. And it's, uh, uh, they're thought of as just like these malice creatures. Um, but she sort of views them with a little more uh, humanity. and. Uh, early on discovers uh, sort of how to, uh, like the, their whole culture is based on bioengineering their their shells of these monsters. Um, but she discovers the humanity within them and uh, the difference between the red eye and the blue eye and, and, uh, and whatnot and tries to, to get the culture to, to shift uh, their perspective on them. And, uh, it's quite a lovely film, um, and uh, the the film goes hard with its action. It's this um, movie is a hard hard PG because there was no PG thirteen at the time of release, um, 
But I feel like this one, in terms of content, sort of stands a little shoulder to shoulder with Princess Mononoke, which is a, P a firm PG-13 film. Uh, the, the violence in it is pretty excessive at times, uh, compared to his other work, certainly the previous films and the ones that are coming forward. Um, uh, but that, for this film, it, it works dramatically. You need that, uh, the weight and the, the little bit of bloodshed that happens throughout the film. Um, the, the climactic con uh, conflict at the end is quite, uh, uh, quite effective, too. Um, but yeah, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is uh, a, a film I was happy to come back to and, and will uh, watch with repeated viewings. Um, it is much better than the old, old, old v uh, VHS uh, version that was made publicly available to rent uh, when I first discovered uh, anime. Uh, this film is lovely. Uh, highly recommend it. Um, and uh, so from this one, this one sort of re retroactively has been considered part of the Ghibli lineup. Um, the next film on the lineup uh, is one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, so I'm excited to uh, dive deep into that one. Uh, but this one does have a, a set up a lot of those elements that are going to carry through in many of the other films. The, the theme of like aeronautics, uh, the, the strong female character, um, which is a term I don't, I don't like to use, but uh, I just did, so oops. Um, and then the, as I mentioned, environmentalism will come back into play. And it's kind of interesting how you watch uh, him dive back into some of these elements, uh, thematic elements, and reinterpret them uh, with uh, later reworkings of, of them. Um, some of this uh, pairs well with, like, Princess Mononoke, as I had mentioned before. Um, Nausicaa also, I think, uh, shows deep inspiration to a lot of uh, more recent uh, American releases. Uh, certainly, Raya and the or Raya and the Last Dragon, Disney's most recent theatrical release, um, borrows heavily from this. I feel like these two films pair very well. But uh, uh, also, there's certainly um, a lot of visual elements and structural elements of this that you can see in. Um, uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, uh, particularly with the Rey character, is somewhat similarly characterized to Nausicaa in her adventurous spirit and stuff, not so much the, uh, the royal lineage, however, I feel like that was originally going to be embedded in the character, just discovered later on. But I feel like, uh, certainly if not J.J. Uh, Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote the screenplay for The Force Awakens, uh, took a look at this movie and found a way to reinterpret it into the Star Wars mythos uh, uh, and whatnot. So if you're looking for this film uh, to do like a double feature, uh, either Rey and the Last Dragon or The Force Awakens would be a good uh, pairing uh, for it. But anyway, excellent film. I give it three and a half out of four stars. Uh, it is... Uh, to this point, the strongest work that Miyazaki had put out. Uh, his next film uh, would go on to be one of my all-time favorite films and my true, genuine introduction to um, uh, the works of Miyazaki, where I discovered who he was as a filmmaker, and from that next movie onwards would track down every movie uh, he, he had his hand in. Um, so anyway, uh, good tease for uh, the next video here, and thanks for watching.